Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey, reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today we take up from where we left off, beginning with diary number 1282. When the same poor people come to the gate a second time, I treat them with great greater gentleness, and I do not let them see that I know they have been here before. I do this in order not to embarrass them. And then they speak to me freely about their troubles and needs. Although Sister N tells me that is not the way to deal with beggars and slams the door in their faces, when she is not there, I treat them as my master would. Sometimes more is given when giving nothing than when giving much in a rude manner. Often the Lord gives me interior knowledge concerning the persons I meet at the gate. One pitiable soul wanted to tell me a bit about herself. Taking advantage of the opportunity, I made her understand in a delicate way the miserable condition of her soul. She went away with a better disposition. September 17, 1937. O oh Jesus, I see so much beauty scattered around me, beauty for which I give you constant thanks. But I see that some souls are like stone, always cold and unfeeling. Even miracles hardly move them. Their eyes are always fixed on their feet, and so they see nothing but themselves. You have surrounded my life with your tender and loving care, more than I can comprehend. For I will understand your goodness in its entirety only when the veil is lifted. I desire that my whole life be but one act of thanksgiving to you, O God. Thank you, O God, for all the graces which unceasingly you lavish upon me, graces which enlighten me with the brilliance of the sun, for by them you show me the sure way. Thank you, O Lord, for creating me, for calling me into being from nothingness, for imprinting your divinity on my soul, the work of sheer merciful love. Thank you, O God, for holy baptism, which engrafted me into your family, a gift great beyond all thought or expression, which transforms my soul. Thank you, O Lord, for holy confession, for that inexhaustible spring of great mercy, for that inconceivable fountain of graces in which sin-tainted souls become purified. Thank you, O Jesus, for holy communion in which you give us yourself. I feel your heart beating within my breast as you cause your divine life to unfold within me. Thank you, O Holy Spirit, for the sacrament of confirmation, which dubs me your knight, and gives strength to my soul at each moment, protecting me from evil. Thank you, O God, for the grace of a vocation, for being called to serve you alone, leading me to make you my sole love, an unequal honor for my soul. Thank you, O Lord, for perpetual vows, for that union of pure love, for having deigned to unite your pure heart with mine and uniting my heart to yours in the purest of bonds. Thank you, O Lord, for the sacrament of anointing, which in my final moments will give me strength, my help in battle, my guide to salvation, fortifying my soul till we rejoice forever. Thank you, O God, for all the inspirations that your goodness lavishes upon me, for the interior lights given my soul, which the heart senses but words cannot express. Thank you, O Holy Trinity, for the vastness of the graces which you have lavished on me unceasingly through life. My gratitude will intensify as the eternal dawn rises, when, for the first time, I sing to your glory. 
Faustina writes here of showing great mercy and delicacy toward the poor who try to take advantage of her kindness by coming back to the door uh, more than once. Another sister advised slamming the door in their faces, but Faustina preferred when possible to show compassion as Jesus would. One poor woman liked to talk to Faustina, and with the insight given to her by God, Faustina used it as an opportunity to steer her towards uh, the conversion of her soul. Faustina thanks Jesus for the beauty she sees around her, and she's saddened by the souls who are hardened and are not open to conversion. Faustina thanks Jesus for the care that he has surrounded her with. She wants to spend her life offering thanks to Jesus. She writes some beautiful poetry here in which she expresses her thanks to the Lord for all the graces throughout her life, for her being created, for her baptism, confession, Holy Communion, confirmation, her vocation to the religious life, her perpetual vows, for the anointing of the sick which she will receive at the end of her life, and for the inspirations, for all the graces that she has received from the Holy Trinity throughout her life. Each of us should do something like this because we don't want to be like the nine lepers who were healed by Jesus and then never went back to thank him. 